Hi everybody, this is AG Marie or Adrian and Warren from Kinder's Pictures and this is the second installment of Kinder's Reviews. Today we are reviewing Columbia Pictures movie, a mystery horror film entitled The Ninth Guest. The description or the summary of this movie is in the description box. So we're going to jump right on into it. Um, this was, it appeared to be very much a B movie, an independent movie. Um, starred I will have the names of the people who starred in it in the description box but I believe Genevieve Tobin and a few other people you probably would recognize from a lot of independent probably some um Hollywood produced or highly produced movies as well so The Ninth Guest is a horror movie set in the 1930s more so a mystery off the bat I already knew I didn't have any particular expectations other than nice gowns <laughs> i knew it was going to be like everybody's going to be dressed very nice in long gowns and tuxedos there's going to be jewelry all over the place wine cigarettes like that's what i expected i didn't expect any particular um i didn't expect this to be any different from any other mystery i've seen it even was i even expected a um like the the mystery dinners that you go to I, I was I was expecting that so um the nice so what makes this movie unique actually is the mystery plays out the story plays out via a voice voiceover a voice over the radio as you can tell by the um description summary in the description box and for people who probably won't be able to access that so the ninth guest is a movie um eight people uh, affluent kind of rich middle class upper class people are invited to a house to an apartment a penthouse type of thing uh for a dinner nobody knows who invited who or who invited everyone and finally someone gets on the radio and says um we're waiting on the ninth guest or the ninth guest hasn't arrived and we go we go straight into the story where the person on the radio is is giving them puzzles and um tasks th different things telling them different things and telling them what not to do um and basically it's a it's a a race to see who can be the last person standing so who will follow the rules or who who would follow the rules and and end up falling into a trap that the rules set up it's it's kind of it's it sounds simple when you read the description but actually saying it out loud seems a bit more complicated but i think you probably get the gist like as the hour i think they have until midnight to um midnight or one o'clock in the morning to figure out who the person on the radio is or figure out who the ninth guest is and slowly one by one something happens to to each guest until the last person or persons are standing so it is it's a unique storyline but at the same time it's really not um so anyway i told you guys what i expected so here's what i got when watching this movie um, first of all, the movie was somewhat of a a commentary on um, classism, elitism, the upper class versus the lower class, the who, the higher ups, the powers that be versus the little people. Even though everybody is pretty much a an affluent person, someone with a certain amount of social um, high social level, high social placement in in their community, you know. Um, From the beginning, I think off top you you already know who the who the who the suspect is. You get the inkling as soon as you watch it. You get the inkling. It's just like they kind of give it away or make it obvious who it is. But throughout the movie, they kind of do this thing where it does the typical mystery thing where everybody has a reason to not like the people in the room. And what I did not expect from this movie, I will say what I didn't expect. Some of the things that happened in this movie were so 
they weren't graphic because it's it's the 1930s it's 1934 so we didn't get like blood and gore and all that everywhere it was so twisted some of the stuff that happened in this movie like i said it wasn't gory and it wasn't graphic but like mentally it was just like really like effed up some of the stuff that happened to people and i'm not gonna lie i'm laughing now and i was laughing when i was watching it because i think the first or second victim i think was the second victim their death was so the third their death was i'm spoiling it but i'm sorry spoiler alert but their what happened to them was so absurd is but it, that it made me laugh like not absurd in a way that it was unbelievable but it was it was kind of genius and I can't I can't I don't want to spoil too much more but a lot of that happened but I will say this still even with those moments that kind of shocked me and threw me off I wouldn't say that this was the best written script, the best written movie that I've ever watched, the best written mystery. Granted, I will also say that I have not watched a lot of classic mysteries. And, but I, I, I have an inkling that there was pretty much a formula. So what I got from the ninth guest is, like the Harlem Globetrotters that I uh, reviewed last week, this was another movie that Columbia was just like, okay, we need a quick way to make money. Somebody write something really quick, put it out <laughs> and distribute it. Um, so I'm not going to say the writing was bad. It was just, it was okay. What happened was there were a lot of good, wild moments. I won't say a lot. There were quite a few of, a few of them, but the writing seemed to be built around those moments as opposed to moments being built into good writing so um it was it was entertaining I would I would watch this movie again I did this with the Harlem Globetrotters as well I would watch this movie again just to watch it from a, a movie viewers eye as opposed to like in review mode um because there might have been things that I missed and it it was it kept me entertained it was it was no um murder on the orient express it was no knives out and I'm trying to think of it was no clue it was no I'm trying to think of like a, a popular classic mystery like something that did really well I can't think of anything but it wasn't you know it wasn't one of those movies that's been cemented in its genre um but I was entertained when I watched it. I would watch it again. Like if it came on TV and absolutely nothing else was on, <laughs> I would probably watch it. Or if, if it came on Turner Classic Movies, I would watch it. Um, is there anything else? Um, screenplay, like I said, it was, it was okay. It was built around big moments as opposed to vice versa. Production, they, here's the difference between The Ninth Guest Again, this is two different decades. I keep referring back to the Harlem Globetrotters because it's also a Columbia picture. Um, the Harlem Globetrotters, 1951. This movie, 1934. The Harlem Globetrotters in 1951, the visual quality of it almost looked like the ninth guest. And that goes to show how much was put into the Harlem Globetrotters, but also... It kind of kind of shows that the ninth guest was at that time. It's it was still a very well produced, well directed movie. Well directed and everything. I mean, and the set wasn't that extravagant. I'll say that the set, the costumes. It was it was a typical 1934, early 1930s movie. It was dark. Um, there was no need for any extravagance outside of costuming. Um, need a wine glass, you just need a simple wine glass. You don't need, the champagne was probably grape juice or apple juice rather. Um, they didn't need um, a set like dinner at eights or grand hotel sets. They didn't need all that. It didn't call for that. So, um, but you can tell that 
the the budget was well used I guess you could say um, well spent I didn't look up information on how much it made at the box office. Um, screenplay acting. Everybody was there was no bad performance and there was no excellent performance. Everybody did came to work, did their job, they went home. <laughs> um, and and that's pretty much it. I did give this movie a rating and I also said that I'm if I were a teenager in 1934 and <laughs> I wanted some alone time with my boyfriend, I would sneak off. I, well, I guess I shouldn't say teen. You don't have to be a teenager, but if I were so a young woman in the 1930s, and you know, you know, there were certain ways you had to do things, and I wanted to spend some alone time with my boyfriend, and we chose to go see, a, go, chose to go see a movie. This will probably be a movie that I will go watch while we just sat in the back of the theater and, and, and cuddled and did all the, well not, not did everything, but <laughs> you know, like do the, the lovey-dovey puppy love type stuff, you know. Um, it's just, like I can imagine teenagers back in the day or anybody, any young couple in love being like, okay, we need to go somewhere dark and I just want to smell your perfume, I just want to smell your cologne. Um, find a movie, any movie, any theater, let's just go there. The Ninth Guest, what is that about? Don't know, don't care, let's go. Like, it, get, it, it gives very much that. Like, like, if I were an audience member, a moviegoer in the early 30s, and I just wanted something playing in the background while I spent some time with somebody that I love in secret. Um, it, that that's that's going a little bit too far so I'm going to leave it where it is <laughs> leaving too many implications out about darkness and theaters and all that so anyway um, I gave this movie a B minus because I gave the screenplay like I said it had its good moments it wasn't the best script but it wasn't the worst it was okay production they made use of what they had um, acting, solid performances, nobody stood out, but nobody was bad. So, um, it was, it wasn't an excellent movie, but it, I wouldn't say it was average either. So, I gave it a, a um, a B minus as a rating. So, um, the ninth guess, I believe it is in the public domain, so you can probably find it pretty much everywhere. I watched it on an app called the Classic Movie Vault. I have Roku, so that's where I download, download that app from, and that's where I watched it. So, thank you so much for tuning in to this review. I will see you next week, and I am going to slowly be slipping into some more horror movies. So, um, stay tuned and see what we have there. So, don't forget to check me out on at KendarisPictures.com. Um, podcast, Kendaris Pictures Podcast is on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Stitcher, um, Radio Public, um, and a few other websites. Anchor, that's the anch the host of it, the host website. Also, when you visit the website, be on the lookout for ways to support KendariusPictures.com. Uh, again, to find links to the podcast, um, and you can subscribe to the mailing list. Blah blah blah. Same old, same old. Thank you again for tuning in. Catch y'all next week.